Okay, this will be for video number five. I've got the tran guards on. They are inch and a half by inch and a half by quarter inch thick. I saw so the boat is a 12 foot Buccaneer. I went with 11 feet tran guards. I have a uh, three inches of stick out. That way you have something to grab onto as well when you're yanking it down. Uh, it's not that necessary, but it helps. Uh, from where I flattened out right here, I started to cut a long taper all the way down to the point. I will be filling this probably about an inch and a half up with TIG weld and then sanding it down to give it a nice transition. I've only welded the top side right now because while it's down, I can do the UHMW next. I'll weld this, stitch the bottom side after when it's flipped up to, uh, back up upright. I, my stitch weld pattern is three inch stitch every three inches. Uh, to do this and to get it installed, take down this chine weld right here, just from here to here, just flatten that out so this sits flush. Pretty self-explanatory. And I got my eyelet. Take welded on, that's for mini jet. They're only like 20 bucks. Um, yeah. So next, I'm just gonna zip this end off. This is a saw I use for mostly every little bit of aluminum cutting, unless I really can't get it into a tight spot. I'll use a zip disc, but welding aluminum, fabricating aluminum, it's always best to clean cut with a skill saw blade. Uh, this is a Milwaukee Fuel 18 volt metal cutting saw. It comes with a 32 metal cutting blade, like a, an actual Milwaukee blade, but these Diablo Steel Demon blades are like $20 cheaper and they're just as good as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's also a 30 tooth blade. It's five and three eighths diameter and yeah, they rip through it. So I'm gonna cut this off and then I'm gonna start the in UHMW, cut the intake out and start hammering down. Set my depth, I've got a pre-marked one eighth and one quarter right on my guide. So I'm just gonna set it to one quarter. because of this angle, so I'm gonna have to set it deeper and just watch the blade. Make sure I don't go too deep. That's it. So with clean cutting with a skill saw blade and aluminum is, even if you have Aluminum dedicated zip disc blade. They do make them actually say aluminum right on them, but there is graphite in them. So you're embedding graphite into your clean aluminum. And then there is a chance of a dirty weld. And then with welding aluminum dirty, you basically have to cut it out and restart. If you really, really, if you're really, really anal, a lot of people aren't, but I am. So uh, yeah. That's what I do. Okay, she is fit. Take block uh, cut out. I have beveled the underside so that it clears the weld. I may look far away here, but as soon as I go down the center and then I'm gonna do down this midsection and I'm gonna be pushing, pushing it down here and then I'm gonna work back towards this corner 
which in turn, it's gonna flatten this, push it all down, and then it, it will be pushing this back up towards the corner. Right now, uh, the UH was sitting up against my wall forever, so it's sort of flattened out. It doesn't really have that break that Jetstream puts in there anymore, but as soon as I bring it down, move back this way, it will be pushing it back up and it will be flush right there. Um, alrighty, I'll uh, show you the tools I use in just a sec. Okay, so I've worked on some boats and had to save them. Some guys really don't know what they're doing and they just drill a hole straight through uh, and then just put their bolt through. Then you got, you need two people, one on, the, one on the other side to like twist the nut on and the other guy on the other side to hold the bolt down. So thread all of these holes. For one, it helps seal the hole cause you got like 200 some odd holes in the boat. The threads help you seal it. And then there's a rubber bonded washer that goes on the other side. That one boat that I worked on that had just a quarter inch, and they use quarter inch, not five sixteenths, a uh, quarter inch bolt just going straight through an open hole, no threads. And instead of the rubber washer, he had a plastic washer and then a metal, uh, then a stainless steel one, and then the friggin' nut. And then when we found that out, it was after the motor was in. So the boat still hasn't come back. He's gonna come back just before spring, but we're gonna have to work from underneath the boat and one guy on the top. The guy on the bottom is gonna be holding the friggin' bolt there. So what we're gonna do, and he used quarter inch, which is kind of good because now I can use the 5 16 drill tap you can get these on Amazon or at your local Home Depot, whatever, 5 16 by 18 is the same thread pitch as the hardware that Jetstream recommends. So that being said, drill tap. Save you time, like twice as much time because you are going to be drilling, then changing your bit over unless you have four drills because you're gonna need one drill to drill, one drill to tap, one drill to countersink, and another drill to screw your bolt in. So now I'm down to three drills. And just lucky I have three. Uh, so, enough talking. Let's start working. HMW is started. It's going good. I went down the center first up until it stopped and then I came down, did my center here. Before I did that, I actually saw take a propane torch. I should have like map gas, but uh, any torch or heat gun you can stand on here and give it a little bit of heat and it'll actually just reform and it'll just drop right down, which makes it a lot easier trying to get your holes in in the exact right spot you want. Uh, so that being said, did that, came down, did my first front row right there, and then I came down to about middle, standing on it, giving it some weight. Did those two, and then I worked back and up here. Uh, Jetstream doesn't put holes in here beside the intake. Um, I suggest you doing it on your own. Reason being, water will get in there and rip this off it'll rip right through these bolts and you'll have a big flapping fucking piece of plastic off the bottom of your boat as you're driving i know it firsthand on the 10 foot i took it out my first rip first 360 ripped the uhmw off the bottom the water got in there because there's a little bit of a gap 
it spun around and the water caught, it ripped it all off. Uh, it ripped right through, uh, not these ones, these ones are new, so I had to do these after the fact. But yeah, there's only bolts up to here. And the UHMW just pulled straight off, straight through those bolts. The bolts were still hanging out in there. Uh, it ripped off the first three. So, actually the first three and then the first two on the end. And then it was just flapping around like crazy. The boat was porpoising like mad. <clears throat> so I put it back on the trailer just to figure out what the hell it was. And yeah, it was both sides had ripped off. So I threw some glue in and which really doesn't do anything. So I had to clamp it as I got up on the other side and drilled through. So what I had to do was get a whole saw, drill through the stringer. I can't really see, it's a little bit dark, but yeah, you can see the hole drilled through the stringer. And I did, I think four or five of them underneath. And yeah, that's what you're gonna have to do. Um, and I highly suggest it. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do that after. I'm gonna do the whole boat first, then I'll come back and do those. Uh, you can also see, you can see the heat mark from where your stringer is. So you can pretty much go halfway between your pump and the stringer, drop a few holes down there, and you should be good. All right, man, let's uh, finish this baby off. When doing this UHMW, set it before work towards your center and then center and then down along the line when you get to the rounded section of the bow you're gonna want to work don't work too far up the middle because it can start to push down and then you'll have a bow here so what you want to do you want to come out work down and you want to work down to this point even go halfway and then work up and then work down. Don't just go across the bottom. Don't just go down the center or vice versa, whatever. You wanna work down on an angle and then up a little bit and down a little bit. So you're creating the bow, the contour of the bow. Yeah. I will, uh, I'll actually film this step. I got a few more holes to do here. Once I'm like good here, I'll film this in uh, time lapse. And when you're doing your holes, the flattest you can have your UHMW pressing against the hull, the better, because as you're drilling and tapping, your threads will actually come up through the hole that you're drilling. If there is a gap here, so if you weren't able to press this down as you're drilling, all your threads will hang out underneath here. So like as you're coming down and finishing this last stitch, uh, drill a hole, like put your foot down, try and get that flat as you're drilling so all your threads come up, then you can just blow them away. But if you can't, then sort of chase them out with the air as you're going along. Do one at a time, don't do four at a time. Uh, it sucks doing one at a time, but if you don't want threads underneath there, then uh, yeah, try it my way. I did drop down through the hull bottom a quarter inch. 
So it's sticking out a quarter inch. And then there is a quarter inch above. Um, sometimes it's a good idea just to transition this a little bit so that water has more free flow into the jet or into the impeller housing. But um, yeah. Good to go. Now I'm gonna flip it over and weld the, the side of the chine guards. And while it's actually, you know what, I'm gonna lift it up a bit. While it's, you know, at chest height, I'm gonna sand this weld and sand the bottom side of these just because it's a lot easier to get it like that than it is right side up. And then once it's up, I'm also gonna put in a little bit of filler there and there and transition that. I have a little low spot right here. So I'll just throw a little dab in that, sand her down. Yeah, we are good. Yo, so all the UHMW is on, all the hardware is in minus a couple that I ran into the weld just on these holes. Um, sure enough, the thread might seal the water out, but I like to have that rubber bonded washer on there. So I'm gonna be die grinding that out and I'm gonna use a certain bit for it. Same with this one. This one ran a little bit close to the weld. <clears throat> that one's a little close to the weld and that one's a little close to the weld. Other than that, the rest are in. Fine. <clears throat> it's funny, I just bought this welder and just figuring it out, it's a lot different from what I was used to, but uh, it wasn't giving me any post flow for when I would let off the trigger. So you can see it just looks like garbage at the end of every stop. It gave me a crater and it looks like it was welded without gas altogether once again there so then finally figured out how to use the machine um, it still wasn't giving me a post flow option with when I was uh, spool gun welding but if I just let off the throttle halfway as if you were going to start the weld you would always press it halfway or shoot out gas then you pull it all the way then your wire would start to come out well yeah, my last welder is, I never had to do that. When I finished welding, it always gave me a little bit of post flow and it wouldn't give me a crater that was all ashed up. Um, but while I was welding these circles, finally figured out and then welded the rest of the boat perfectly. Um, so that's why that looks like crap, but I'm not worried because I'm just not. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna use there's different kind of bits for dry grinding. This is your standard standard bit for stainless alumina or stainless and steel. Um, but when you die grind aluminum with this, it all gets embedded into those small little uh, grooves. So if you didn't know, these are meant for aluminum. They rip it out like butter and they stay sharper longer. Yeah, they're great little bits. So I'm gonna use this guy. What I'm gonna do is come straight in, straight in flat with it because you can, it's a 90 degree angle. I'm just gonna come in straight flat and then take, take out the little bit of weld. And same with these guys back here. And I don't think I'm gonna bother re-welding around it. There's enough weld in this thing that's nothing's gonna break apart so I'm just gonna take it out take it out there coming straight and then I'll probably hit it with my mini two inch sander and probably get that in there and just like buff it up a little bit I don't know we'll see see what I need to do when the time comes and yeah so I've got one two three four five holes to do
those holes are ready to go. And let's uh, lift this up. So I can put my hardware back in. And if this boat falls on me, at least I'll be on film, right? Alrighty. done in the past and these I switched up my game plan I put in a little tiny dab of anti-seize on each bolt because on the last builds I've done if you're putting your nut on you can actually unscrew the bolt from the other side then it'll be sticking out the bottom so that little bit of anti-seize yes 100% it will prevent galling uh, if you don't know what gulling is, it's um, friction. It's a combination of friction from the nut going on to the stainless steel. This only happens on stainless steel and actually stainless steel with um, carbon. So if you're using like a stainless steel nut and a carbon or stainless steel bolt carbon nut uh, or vice versa, it can gull. So you always want to use stainless, uh, any seeds on stainless steel. Um, and yeah, that's what it was getting at there. So yeah, galling. It can just the friction and say, uh, a little burr on a piece of thread will actually fuse itself together and you will not get this nut off or on any further. You basically have to cut it off. So that's galling, and it's usually uh, stainless steel. And another thing I wanted to use it for is the nut will go on way smoother and not push, not unthread the bolt and push it out the other side. Then you need another person on the bottom side holding that nut on with, a, with your Allen wrench and then you on this side putting the nut on. So. I was able to get all these nuts on and nothing went back down through the other side. So that being said, I'm gonna throw the washers on. Oh, here's a little trick to putting the washers on. Okay, throw five of them on right now. I just use um, just a socket. easier than pushing them all on by hand. You'll destroy your thumbs. I just get it started, put that on, give it a push. Like that, give it a push. Done. 
Now I'm gonna put just a tiny little dab of this shit on there. Just tiny, tiny. Just around the tip of the thread. Where are we here? Right here. A little bit there. Just a tiny bit. I'm not going all the way around. And one up here. Just a tiny little dab. Just a little dab will do ya. Where's my other ones? One up here. One here. That's it. Then the nuts, and they will thread right down with ease. Another thing, putting these down, I uh, turn the speed down on my drill, just so that I'm not going too fast once you get past the nylock and then you're smooth sailing. That's what's gonna start that screw from staying in place and then stop when it starts to balloon out you don't want to you don't want to split the uh, rubber Cut out around each washer. Just take the weld away. Those are all sitting flat. And that is it for the UHMW. It is all installed. And this is the crucial ones that you must do. Um, but the UH that comes from Jetstream, they're not, the holes are not already pre-drilled for you in there. I don't know why, but um, yeah, maybe just in case people get their measurement on the stringers wrong. So what I did, I went from the other side, because there's already upside down at this point, right? So I went from the side, I went and took a mark from the edge, the edges of my intake block. And then I made another mark that was about halfway Actually, no. So I made a mark where my where the heat mark is for the string. I don't know if you can see it in the reflection there. And then I measured halfway. And this is making marks on the bottom of the hull, obviously. Um, but there's a heat mark for that stringer. And then the, obviously midway of this weld will be the intake block. So then I made a mark on here, halfway, draw a straight line, bam, down that side, did the same on this side. And then that's where I made my holes to put the UHMW on. If you don't, I don't know if you've seen the last video, but doing even one 360, if you don't put those in, the UH will rip off all the way up to about even six bolts will like, it'll rip right through that uh, um, countersunk bolt. So you must put those in. If you're running a 10 foot, you can actually drill, use a hole saw, drill some holes in the stringer and you can get the bolts in that way as well. Uh, because the, the stringers are way closer to the intake and the 10 foot bolts. All right, and that's that.